Welcome back. Now the conclusion to our story, living with wildlife. It would not be possible to discuss Utah wildlife without talking about roadkill. Annually, wildlife vehicle collisions called WVCs cost Americans an estimated $8 billion. Typically, roadkill is counted by tracking reported car accidents involving wildlife. However, research has indicated that the true number could be five times more because so many WVCs go unreported. At least 17,000 mule deer alone are killed every year on UDOT administered roads. There's even more on your county roads and local roads. So I can easily say that at least 20,000 mule deer a year, not, and that doesn't include <clears throat> the elk, the moose, the mountain lion, the black bear, and all the smaller critters. Research has demonstrated that high fences reduce roadkill by 54 percent, and the combination of fences and crossing structures led to a roadkill reduction of 83 percent. Add a big enough overpass to the adequate fencing and wildlife mortality drops to almost zero. However, a wildlife bridge over a roadway is the most expensive type of wildlife crossing. So there's three basic types of animal crossing structures. The first and most common one are culverts that go under the road and there's usually dirt around the, the structure. The second one are bridges. Sometimes we can combine those bridges with the flow of water in a stream, but make sure there's terrestrial pathways next to the stream so the animals can get through it. And the third type are overpasses where the animals are going above the highway. So I monitor wildlife crossing structures with remote cameras that are motion sensitive and they take multiple pictures every time they're triggered by an animal. And um, I monitored 37 structures across the state of Utah. Dr. Kramer has discovered that when building a culvert under the road for wildlife, the length is the most important dimension. If the tunnel is too long, it will not be effective because wildlife bulk at the distance of the enclosure. Next in importance is width. The tunnel needs to be wide enough that the animal doesn't feel threatened by the potential of stalking predators. And the least important to an effective culvert is height. This camera here, it, I put this up before the fence was, and what this camera does is it looks out on the landscape and asks the question, who else is out there besides the ones that are coming to the, the culvert? And what I find almost every wildlife crossing structure in Utah, the elk are out here, <laughs> but they won't come near the road. So, the structure does really great for deer, but this camera shows, well, we've got to figure out how to get the elk over. Since the mid-2000s, Dr. Kramer has documented almost 100,000 times that mule deer and other animals have used culverts in Utah, proving their effectiveness. So my, my spouse, Robert Hamlin, examined the pictures for 2017, and we averaged 27 deer a day which is phenomenal. If you get one a day, it's great. When you put just one camera in, all you know is the animals that came through. You don't know how many were at the other end refusing to go through. So you could have a herd of elephants over here and you wouldn't know it with just one camera. So when I report to UDOT, I always report to the success rate and the repel rate. And so we want at least a 75% success rate for a structure. If it's less than that, we did something wrong. And so I help UDOT figure out the best configurations. The next step is to make it a part of the planning process. There's some champions within the Division of Wildlife and UDOT who are out there saying, oh, there's a project coming up. We could put a wildlife crossing in when we replace that bridge. And that's what we want to see everyone doing. Standardized highway planning methods. Dr. Kramer would like to see all new construction, public and private, to consider wildlife migration and resource utilization when designing their development. But currently, the best defense against wildlife collisions in Utah is driver vigilance. If you want to help prevent us from hitting animals on the road, the most immediate thing you can do is be aware and use that peripheral vision. And if there's one animal, there's more. Slow down as much as you can, flash your lights to oncoming vehicles, tap your brakes for the ones behind you. 
Without wildlife crossings, geographic areas that were once connected become islands cut off from the other regions, causing inbreeding that can lead to disease and even extinction. Everybody in Utah values wildlife differently. You know, we, we have a belief statement that wildlife is important and valuable to every, everybody. Um, and it's just people differ on what level of wildlife populations they're willing to tolerate. As urban sprawl continues, encroaching into wildlife habitat, the commingling with megafauna becomes unavoidable, living with wildlife inevitable. One of the things I'm most happy with is, um, this is going to sound a little different coming from a wildlife biologist, but it's sitting down with a diverse group of stakeholders with the public and having a committee and saying, how do we want to manage deer for the next five years? How do we want to manage elk? For, for the foreseeable future and getting all those ideas on the table and really trying to work through and improve management of wildlife in Utah. That's the stuff that really gets me excited. Living with wildlife is exciting. As human development expands on the horizon and wildlife habitat is devoured, wildlife must adapt to survive. Let us adapt as well and show our love and respect for our fellow beasts in this place we call Utopia. Thanks for joining us this week. We hope you enjoyed the show. Visit our website to learn more and to watch previous episodes of Utopia. And remember, we don't inherit the earth from our parents. We borrow it from our children. Mm -hmm.